Welcome to this week's episode of Aspiring News. I'm your host, Cash. And I'm Luke. In this week's episode, we will be covering the recent musical, the mock election at SHS, hear more from some of our fellow Spartans, and much more. There will be no school next week with Thanksgiving break, parent-teacher conferences, and of course the annual Strombaum tournament. Good luck to all our basketball players, those traveling over break, and our parents and teachers who will be on, in on Monday and Tuesday. When we come back, it will, always, it will already be December. Where is the year gone? Congratulations to our varsity Overwatch esports team on making it to the winter playoffs. They climbed from 40th up to 5th place and secured their playoff spot two weeks before they expected to. Shout out to Kyle Rowland, Jake Meyer, Colin Mills, Melissa Yeager, Bobby Hamilton, and Reagan Nee for all the hard work they have put in, and good luck moving forward. Congratulations are also in order for our Valorant team for making the playoffs after fighting through adversity all season. Special shout out to Cash Vest, Liam Jones, Adrian Springer, Isaiah Malloy, and Spencer Malloy, with Melissa Yeager, Logan Welpley, Lucas Diaz, and Luke Curtis. Congrats to all our esports competitors on a great winter season. As a reminder, please make sure your Chromebook is fully charged before school each day. A charged Chromebook with your case means we're ready to learn. Let's make sure we're all set for a great day. Just a quick reminder that there is after-school tutoring available with our NHS students in the cafeteria from 2.45 to 3.45 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The senior class photo will be taken on Monday, December 16th in the main gym during Spartan Stretch. Please reach out to the senior class sponsors, Mr. Majerus or Mr. Doty with any questions. The SHS Movie Club is back for the school year. Join your fellow cinema fans after, in, after school in T165 on the first Thursday of each month to watch some of the greatest movies of all time. Talk all things film and analyze elements of great filmmaking. That's all we have for this week, Spartans, but be sure to check out all our news shows, Spartan updates, sports coverage, extended news stories, and vlogs on the Sycamore High School YouTube channel. Just a few weeks ago on November 4th, the U.S. held its presidential election and Sycamore hosted its first ever mock election for students who couldn't vote because of age. As dozens of students flocked to the polls, reporter Phoenix Calabrese got the inside scoop of people's opinions about the mock election and how they felt about being given the opportunity to vote. Let's see what they have to say. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, it was cool that I at least could participate in some form here. Um, I'm really glad because I wasn't able to vote, like, actually, because I'm 17, but um, I'm glad I participated. Um, I felt pretty happy participating. And I think it's a great thing for all um, students to do, especially once they have that ability to vote. Awesome. And so with that right to vote? I think voting is one of the import most important rights in the United States. That's how you express your opinion and everyone should do it. 100 percent. It's like how we get a say in what's happening. Definitely. I think it's probably our most important right that we have as U.S. citizens. Yeah. Yeah, I think we were given the right to vote, so we should I think it is very much important and I think it's a civic right and duty for everybody to do that. Yeah, I definitely think I will vote in the future. Definitely, yeah. As soon as I can, I definitely will. Yeah, for sure. I'm really excited. 110%. Yes, I will. <laughs> yeah, every vote counts. I voted. 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 We voted. It looks like we got quite the voter turnout here at Sycamore High School. We sure did. It's awesome to see how passionate our young voters are. The right to vote is certainly important, and I'm glad that here at SHS we are encouraging everyone to exercise their right to vote as often as possible. Thank you to everyone who took the time to vote, and we hope to see you next year. We have a new segment that we're really excited about here at Spartan News, Science Corner. Let's head over to Adam and Mrs. Regnery for this week's Science Corner, studying polymer chains. For this month's Science Corner, we will be doing an interesting experiment over the properties of molecules, and when in contact with water and 
colored pencils? My name is AJ, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do this activity. First, you're going to need a Ziploc bag, colored pencils, preferably sharpened, and a water source. First, take the bag and fill it with water. About halfway is good. Once you have the right amount of water, take one of the colored pencils and poke a hole through the bag from where the water is at. It may seem like the water would spill out at this point, but the complete opposite happens. No water spills out whatsoever. Just make sure that you have the colored pencils poke out from the bag on the other side, so that the pencils are both going and coming out of the hole you made. Repeat this process with the other colored pencils you may have until you run out or have no more room to put pencils in. So now that you're done, what exactly is going on here? I went ahead and asked a biology teacher here at Sycamore High School, Mrs. Regnery, and asked for her to explain the science on the experiment. Here's what she had to say. Okay, so for an explanation as to why water does not leak out of a plastic bag, we need to start with carbon. Okay, carbon is a really interesting atom because it really likes to form four different bonds. Um, the next thing we need to talk about is the idea of monomers and polymers. So monomers are essentially small building blocks of molecules and each little um, angle here is a carbon, right? So um, your monomers, when chained together, can make a polymer, and plastics are polymers. And polymers can do another really cool thing because they're made of primarily carbons. They can do what we call cross-linking. So you can see that these two polymers are connected by a bond here. Um, and Cross-linking, if there's a lot of it, it provides a lot of rigidity to the structure of a substance. If there's just a little bit of it, what we end up with is sort of flexibility and gumminess to the material. So plastics are made in both ways, both rigid and more flexible. Your bag, for example, was very flexible, which allows it to kind of form a seal around the pencil when it goes in. And there you have it. The plastic material that the bag has is also has polymers surrounding it. When the pencil pierces the bag into the water, the polymers chains break and a tight bond seal around the pencil is made so that it protects any water from spilling out. We also did a control variable with a bag made of different material, paper. The water spilled out immediately when we pierced the pencils into it, so it's safe to say that the plastic bags are important to this experiment. Big thanks to Mrs. Regnery for helping explain the science behind this experiment. And this also concludes this episode of Science Corner. The world is full of science no matter where or what we do. There's always an explanation around the corner and science has the answers. Thanks Adam and thank you Mrs. Regnery for teaching us how that experiment works. Let's take a quick break to learn more about the upcoming YAG dodgeball tournament and get a quick dad joke from Mr. Bolster before returning with more of the Spartan News. Do you want to be this guy? Well good, we want you to play too. Sycamore High School's Youth and Government Club is hosting a dodgeball tournament on Friday, November 22nd. It'll be at 5.30 in the Fieldhouse. Groups will be five to eight people and tickets are $8 per person. Signups will come out later this month. Watch your email and put on your game face. Welcome to Dad Jokes with Ballster. I'm your host, Kennedy. Let's go find Mr. Ballster. Hey, Mr. Ballster. Yeah. Can we borrow you set for a yeah. What's going on? Um, well, give us your best dad joke. Oh, dad joke for today. How about, uh, I finally got caught. I got caught um, talking to my mailbox. I was trying to send a voicemail. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ballister. That was a good one. That was Dad Jokes with Ballisters, episode uno. November means it's musical time here at SHS. Here's Holly Schneck with a recap of this year's production of Cinderella, the Enchanted Edition. Sycamore High School's auditorium presented Rodgers and Hammerstein's Cinderella, the Enchanted Edition, on November 8th, 9th, and 10th. Every show was a fantastic display of talent, and the cast hard work truly shone through. 
Cinderella was portrayed by Susie Gallegos, with Felipe Bajagrovic as Prince Christopher, Reese Stouffer as the fairy godmother, and the Wicked Step family brought to life by Gianna Huffstetler, Claire Worsing, and Marcella Fraser. Each performance felt more magical than the last, with laughter and cheers from the audience adding to the joy and creating a truly memorable experience to all. Jackson Sullivan, who played the king, says his favorite part of the performance was the ballroom scene because he felt it went very well each night and was a lot of fun to perform. Alongside Jackson's performance, Evelyn Irwin, who played the queen, reflects on her experience with the audience. She was surprised by the laughter during her first scene, where she argues with the king. Evelyn had viewed the scene as a concerned and worried argument, rather than a humorous one but the audience reaction helped her see it in a new light. Congratulations to everyone involved and the next performance to look forward to at the high school auditorium is a spring play. The play that goes wrong. Thank you for joining us. I'm Holly Schneck. Now back to the studio. Wow. Great job to everyone who participated in the musical this year. Whether they were cast, crew, or pit musicians. You guys did an excellent job every year, and we always enjoy your hard work and dedication to theater. It's not just a musical that we start to think about when November comes around. It's also time to start getting ramped up for magicals. Freshman reporter Yesh Ramirez has caught up with, the, with Fiona Blake to talk about the upcoming magicals event. Hi, I'm Yesh, and I'm here with... Fiona Holtz, Blake Bright. And today we're interviewing about Magdalene. What song are you singing? Um, we're singing 25 different memorized pieces. Um, <laughs> some pieces that you might know are like Joy to the World, uh, Silent Night, anything you can think of, Blake? I mean, there's a lot of songs that are in different languages, which took a lot to get used to, for sure. But you should know the melody. Right. What's your favorite song? Um, I really love Thum Thum Thum. It's, it's just so fun to sing. Um, I like Ila Bella Ball, which is a French song um, about women singing about their husbands. Complaining about their in husbands French. in yeah. French. What song was the most difficult? Um, there's a song we're singing called uh, There Was an Old Man in a Tree, and the rhythms are absolutely bonkers. I would agree. Um, that one was really difficult to learn, not just because of the pitches, um, but like Fiona said, there were those two. What song was the easiest? Um, I would say the carols, because we already knew the melody, so we could just build off of that. Yeah, definitely the carols. Um, probably Silent Night for me, because I sang it before in the past, and you know, I already knew the melody. How do you audition? Um, you audition for Mr. E, and auditions are usually held like late August. Uh, the audition usually requires sightseeing, um, a 30 second song of your choice, and a chosen audition excerpt from Mr. E. When are your concert dates? Um, the date this year is November 23rd. Show times are 5.30 and 7.30. What, what do you have to wait? Um, we wear like old timey costumes, so I have like a dress with like puppy sleeves and stuff like that. But everyone's costume is different. But what's really funny about it is that the boys have to wear tights. What did you want to do behind you? Um, I love to sing. I think I'm pretty good at it. And yeah, it was just a really fun experience that I would be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I second that. Um, I've done singing for a while, so I just thought it would be a great opportunity and something to try out that I hadn't before. New experience. What's the most fun part of it? Um, I would say just getting to work with the people. We've become really close, and I just love them all with my whole heart. Yeah, I'd say the people, but also being able to learn new music um, is something that I've really enjoyed through the program. Would you recommend it? Absolutely. Go out for it. It's awesome. For sure. Um, if you're like down in the audition process, just go for it. It's worth it. 
Thank you for your time. Get your tickets today. Silvertickets.org. Now, now back to the studio. Thanks, Yesh. Magical sounds like it's going to be a blast. What a way to get into the winter holiday spirit. You know how leaves change color? I can't say I know how it happens, do you? I don't know either, but let's turn to a donut to learn why leaves change color in fall and more. As Autumn says soon, you may notice the vibrant color of the leaves turning orange, yellow, and red as they fall to the ground. But what exactly causes them? The leaves fall off the trees in the fall as, a pro as part of a process called abscission. During the colder months, trees stop the flow of water and nutrients to the leaves. Without these resources, the chlorophyll breaks down, causing the green color you normally see to fade away and the oranges and reds to appear. These are the natural colors of the leaves. Eventually, the leaves will detach and, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and they'll fall to the ground uh, during the winter so that way the tree can conserve energy. They're fun because you can rake them all up into a pile and just fall into them. <coughs> But it, the leaves don't last forever. They only fall off the trees so that way they can prepare the tree for winter. Snow is formed when water vapor from the sky turns into ice crystals and then like they stick together. And then when they become super duper heavy, they like start falling. So what do you think, Sorry. But anyways, back to the studio. Bye. It's cold. They say you learn something new every day and I just did. Thank you, Adona, and I hope you were able to warm up after being out in the cold. Let's take another short break before returning with the final few segments of this month's Spartan News. It's getting colder and the days are getting shorter. But why are they so short? Daylight savings time. What is daylight savings time? What we're experiencing now is actually the end of daylight savings time. Starting in March, its purpose is to give us an extra hour of daylight during the evenings in the summer and more light on winter mornings. While nobody's excited about the sun setting at 4.30, it doesn't seem like there will be an end to daylight savings anytime soon. We can at least be grateful we don't have to wake up hours before the sun does. A new walkway around the pond on South Prairie Drive in Borden has just opened to the public. The new almost one mile walkway provides a pretty view over the pond. It may look barren now, but the city's planting trees and installing benches to make the area more scenic. So if you enjoy fishing, if you're spending your afternoon in nature, then look no further. Winter sports are starting up and fall sports postseason are rounding out. Let's head over to Josh Miller with all your sports updates for this week. What's up Spartans? I'm Josh Miller back with another episode of Spartan Sports. Today we'll be recapping some of the fall sports seasons and going over upcoming winter sports that Spartans are able to partake in. First, the football team finished with a great season going 11-1, making it to the quarterfinals in the 5A playoffs Thank you seniors for an amazing four years, which included many deep playoff runs. The volleyball team finished 10 and 22. Great effort this year, girls. The soccer team capped off their season with an amazing record of 16, seven and one, going nine and one in the conference with many close games. Great season, boys. And now on to some upcoming winter sports. Boys basketball starts November 27th with the Strombaum tournament over Thanksgiving break. Girls basketball kicks off their season Tuesday the 26th against Belvedere. Wrestling practice is also now underway, and the wrestlers are looking to start off their season with their first meet being a quad meet on the 27th at home. That's it for me this week, Spartans. I'm Josh Miller, and I'll see you guys next time on another episode of Spartan Sports. Thanks, Josh, and thanks all our sports guys. Go Spartans! We now go over to Kyle Crandon with our Spartan on the Street for this month. Kyle and the guys went around to ask students and staff about some questions about their favorite things. Let's see what they find out. What's up, Spartans? I'm Kyle Cranon, and today we'll be doing Spartan on the Street, and we're going to go interview some kids and ask them some questions. I'm here with... Logan Hodges. All right, and if you're a at Island, what three things would you bring? Food, water, and a fishing pole. Oh, nice. Well, thank you, Logan. All right, I'm here with... Alex Rank. All right, what is your favorite holiday, and why? It's probably just Thanksgiving, because the food. What is your favorite Thanksgiving food? Just the, probably stuffing, I don't know. All right, thank you, Alex. All right, I'm here with Michael. All right, and Michael, what? Is, who is your favorite quarterback of all time and why? Uh, my favorite quarterback of all time would be Peyton Manning because he was a dog. That's it, just a dog? I mean, on and off the field, just a great guy. And, I mean, big forehead, great-looking dude. Couldn't agree more. Thank you. Yep. I'm here with Mrs. Weiser. I'm Mrs. Weiser. What is your favorite part about teaching at SHS? 
Uh, I like working with the kids, uh, getting to know them, seeing their strengths, uh, working with them to learn uh, the assignments and figuring out ways that best meet their learning styles. All right, thank you. And I love your outfit for Twin Day. Oh, thanks. I'm here with uh, Ryan. All right, Ryan, what is, if you could have a superpower, what would the superpower be? Uh, to freeze time. And why would you want to freeze time? Why would I want to freeze time? Uh, uh, just to do things, I don't know. Right, I'm here with Senior Doty. All right, Senior Doty. What is your favorite part about teaching Spanish? Um, you know, I enjoy seeing people learning a new language, having fun. You know, we do a lot of fun games and, and things that, that are really enjoyable in class. I love seeing my students happy and speaking a new language. All right, thank you, Mr. Doty. Thank you for everybody's time, and I'll back to the studio. Thanks, Kyle, and all our Spartans who participated this time. It's always interesting to find out what our students and staff think. That's all we have for this week's Spartans. I'm Cash. And I'm Luke. Have a great week, Psycho High, and happy Thanksgiving.